pretty hard to follow a rock star, uh, but I'll do my best. Uh, good morning to everybody, and uh, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you today. You know, um, over the last couple of days and certainly throughout the rest of the week, you're hearing an awful lot about our strategy that we refer to as the connected enterprise. In addition, <clears throat> you know, Fran just gave you some insight into some new products and, that we're pretty excited about that'll be coming out over the next 12 to 18 months. I'd like to spend the next 30 to 60 minutes, no, I try to get done as fast uh, as I can in 30 minutes, to talk to you about how my teams are working to extend Rockwell Automation's position in the process control and information software space. So we start out, you hear a lot again about this connected enterprise, and I wanted to introduce the concept again. You know, and first, talk about why do we do it. <clears throat> it is because we feel that we're uniquely positioned to leverage our portfolio to drive value-based outcomes for our customers. That means giving you the opportunity to drive financial returns. <clears throat> How do we do it? And what is the connected enterprise? It's really about three core capabilities. First, you have to have the integrated architecture and software, which you heard a moment ago, has evolved into a very high performance architecture. Second is an intelligent motor control strategy, which is all about helping our customers build smarter, more connected assets. And then last, we leverage our domain expertise in solution delivery, as well as aftermarket support to make sure that we can make the connected enterprise run for you and that it stays running. So what I'd like to talk about now is how my group leverages all of those capabilities in order to deliver on Plant PAX, our modern DCS, as well as our industrial information management strategy. I'll start with Plant PAX. You know, we talk about Plant PAX as being a modern DCS. And the reason is, is that we think that it differentiates from our competition in three key areas. First is its flexible architecture. Second is its contemporary infrastructure design. And last is our focus on workforce productivity. I'll go into each one of these subjects a little bit more. First, let's talk about the DCS architecture. You know, our traditional competitors, the traditional DCS, they have very closed, locked down, centralized systems. This design was due to make up for the gaps in technology of the day. You see, many of these platforms are 15 to up to 30 years old in their initial designs. They've served industry well over the years. They've provided determinism, redundancy, and high availability but they come with significant drawbacks. First is the cost. It's very expensive to procure their systems, can be even more expensive to maintain them and keep them running. In addition, the customer gets locked into vendor-supplied integration and aftermarket support services. Finally, with their architectures and a move toward modular plant design, it's very difficult to integrate skids into the main DCS. So this is where the modern DCS is different. We've based our architecture on commercially off-the-shelf technology. We focus on providing you with plant-wide control, which is that the DCS architecture extends beyond just the process control application in your plant, but also to many other balance of plant applications. In addition, the networks and technology that we use are all built to provide better data, access to data, and data integration. So this leads to a more flexible, open architecture that's future-proof and can be upgraded easily to take advantage of new technologies. So to our traditional DCS competitors, modern technologies like the cloud, mobility, virtualization, can be seen as disruptive. With the modern DCS, we embrace it 
and we can easily adapt our architecture to help you take advantage of the improvements that these technologies can bring. So looking forward, please don't ever be held hostage to your traditional DCS again. Technology life cycles are getting very short. And your purchasing decision today, 10 years from now, you'll be in the same position as you are today with your current legacy system. And so if the technology exists to do something different, I'd suggest you should take a look at taking advantage of that. So next, we'll move into DCS network infrastructures. And again, in talking about the traditional DCS, you know, you're really dealing with closed proprietary networks. And then what compounds the issue is that since their architecture that I just talked about a minute ago does not easily extend into additional applications in your facility, you end up with disparate control systems and even more proprietary networks. These can be very complicated to make work with each other and extremely hard to make work with IT technology. So in a modern DCS, our network technology is based on standard unmodified ethernet. I think we led the way when we made this decision probably about 12 years ago that we would use standard unmodified ethernet for our device level, peer-to-peer, -peer, and information networks. What this does is give you the same network on the plant floor as is in the enterprise. So now it enables not only a lot of easy information flow, but it also gives you an architecture that's flexible, can be changed to adapt to new technology. When we talk about security, the only way to talk about security is that it's changing all the time. As new threats enter to defeat what yesterday's standard was, there will be a new security standard. Our Ethernet IP architecture can easily adapt to those changing, changing requirements. Finally, it would be a network that millions of IT professionals are familiar with and can support. And together with our partnership with Cisco, we've put together reference architectures that make sure that you can build the networks in a way to get high performance, reliability, and the best security techniques. So now we'll talk about our focus on workforce productivity. And looking at the traditional DCS, you know, typically you are locked in to only the DCS vendors implementation and aftermarket services. In a lot of cases, this can result in long wait times for service. One thing for sure, it certainly does increase your costs. In addition, as I talked before, your plan has to be prepared to support lots of disparate automation systems and networks. In Plant PAX, we focus heavily on driving automation productivity. So we begin with a Plant PAX library and design tools that make our system very easy to design, implement, and modify should you have to. We have thousands of our own engineers globally, and depending on the industry and if we have the right expertise, we would like to be your choice to integrate Plant PAX. But we know that we can't be all things to all people, and so that's why we work with a vast network of systems integrators who give you the opportunity to get the right expertise in the right locations. So now I'd like to share with you a customer example. This comes from Yuhan Kimberly, who is the top producer of personal hygiene and household supplies in Korea. You know, with the strong population growth in Asia, they've seen a tremendous increase in demand for tissue, toilet paper, and paper towels. Initially, they needed to upgrade their plant's capacity, and they chose Rockwa Automation for both their safety architecture as well as their discrete operations in the plant. But they were having issues with their legacy DCS. It was very difficult and very costly to support. And so after an evaluation process, they selected Plant PAX. They needed a new, more future-proof system 
that could give them the benefits of modern technology. By making this choice at Plant PAX, they got a handful of benefits which they talk about. First is, probably one of our key differentiators is plant-wide control. A single unified architecture for the control platform network software across the entire plant. Now don't take this wrong, this isn't about doing process control with a PLC. These are designed in features specifically for the process industry, just like Fran talked about in motion and safety and discrete. And so the system is designed for each one of the applications, but it's a single architecture to solve all of those application problems across the plant. So plant-wide control brought significant value in that the customer has one system now to train employees on, one system to keep spares. In addition, they took advantage of some of our new faceplates, which gives them increased visibility into the, into the process. It gives them the, the ability to correct issues before they happen. They adopted the Plant PAX library when implementing the system. It took implementation time down from eight months, eight months to six months, a 25% improvement in time to market. So these are a handful of reasons why we call Plant PAX a modern DCS. We're not necessarily trying to, to duplicate our traditional competitors. We're trying to leverage modern technology to offer you a new choice. So please, if you take a look inside of your, your, uh, your schedules, you'll see a, a complete process track where you can learn more about what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I'd like to shift and talk about our information management business. You know, you heard Sujit refer to in, in the, the opening about the tremendous opportunity that exists to harness data from machines and that Rockwell Automation is well positioned to do it. But in the last year to 18 months, there's been a significant shift in this industry. First, almost every major industrialized nation in the world has some sort of smart manufacturing initiative going on. These are typically a public-private partnership. And so it'll be the government combined with some major manufacturers. Their goal is to write specifications about how manufacturers should take advantage of modern technology like IoT, cloud, mobility, to build more productive manufacturing facilities. In addition, there's a lot of industry consortiums that are available to help customers start that journey and in the next few slides, I'd like to talk to you about what Rockwell Automation is doing to help you build a connected enterprise. So you also heard the statistic that says for only 14% of manufacturers have actually connected their production process to their enterprise. In addition, there is an increased risk of cyber attacks, and many customers have reported a loss of some sort of IP as a result. This is why a single, unified, robust, secure network infrastructure is critical. As I mentioned before, we leverage Ethernet IP networks. This gives us a significant number of differentiators, we believe. First, our control and information network infrastructure is the same on the plant floor as it is in the office. This provides one common ar architecture to maintain. It speeds the integration of information technology to your operations technology. It is secure and supported by millions of IT professionals, as I mentioned before. And we believe that the adoption of Ethernet IP has positioned us to accelerate the use of commercial technologies that can be used in manufacturing. Now it takes, so the beginning is to make sure you have the good network infrastructure. Second, you heard it mentioned that we need to begin to think about all of the devices, all of the, the products that build an automation system as smart connected assets. That means every sensor all of our instrumentation, our controllers, drives. 
need to be able to produce information about their own state. This is what we refer to as self-aware. And when lots of these products are brought together to build a machine or a process, they hold a tremendous amount of information about what's going on inside the process. We refer to this as system aware. And so these are some of the critical changes in our architecture that are taking us from an integrated architecture to a high performance architecture. So what if your factory could talk? That would make a pretty good brand name, right? Well, by leveraging self-aware and system-aware assets, we're able to collect a tremendous amount of data to tell you about what's going on in the process. And so now you can learn things like, how much energy did it take to produce each product? You can send alerts to operators and maintenance people so that they can correct a process when it's going out of control. Production uh, operations people can look and see if they're meeting their daily production. And so, as control engineers, we have a tendency to focus really highly on the automation system. But in order to release operational value, we've been focusing over the last 10 years and really significantly in the last five on building a software portfolio that when applied on top of the high performance architecture can help you drive operation productivity. In order to make this work, as I mentioned, you really have to have, you have to select a supplier that has the ability to provide a high performance architecture that is smart, productive, and secure. And so now I'd like to give you an example of our information management business. And it comes from Ford Motor. You know, Ford had five different scheduling systems hosted in legacy PCs all around the world. Their maintenance costs were becoming very high, and in a lot of cases, the suppliers quit supporting the software platforms. And so they decided to replace and move to a new build and tracking system for their manufacturing operations. They wanted to roll this out immediately to five plants located in, not traditionally, like they might have been located in Michigan or Ohio. Now they're in Spain, Thailand, China, Turkey, and the United States. They wanted to have the same system and have visibility into each plant and what was happening. They called this system the Next Generation Automated Vehicle Scheduling System. That's a mouthful. We call it Next Gen AVS. Next Gen AVS was based upon Production Center an automotive suite, one of our software offerings, and it was tightly coupled with logics at the automation layer. So what Ford was able to do um, is really uh, put together much smoother and flexible vehicle build operations. At Next Gen AVS gave them the opportunity to manage more than two million variations in their product. Many times in a single in a, for a single unit, up to 150 stations will make a decision about the product outcome. In addition, it improved their vehicle tracking and visibility into their manufacturing process. Ford so far deployed this at 25 out of their 40 plants globally, and more to come in the future. So, in review, we talked about the the high performance architecture. We talked about the importance of networks and the importance of smart connected assets, but you really have to go beyond just, this, just connecting everything. Because when you do this, there's going to be huge volumes of data created. And you can see here, it's estimated by 2020, 44 z zettabytes. Sorry for the, for the lisp there. That's 10 to the 21st power of information will be created, but I guess what's confusing about this is that only about one third of that information will be useful. And for that reason, only about a quarter of our company's employees are actually using this data to improve their performance. And so you can see that we're gonna have a lot of really big data in industry to manage. 
And so, for our next topic and discussion, I'd like to bring up to join me Martin Otterson. Martin is the Senior Vice President of Sales, Marketing, and Industry for OSI Soft. Hi, Martin. Hi, John. Come on up. Thanks for having me. How are you? Good, good. Thanks okay. for having me. Yeah, welcome. So, uh, so Martin, can you just give us an overview to OSI Soft and, and why you're here? Yeah, yeah. We uh, had a, a user conference uh, back in April, and we invited Rockwell and John to come visit with our users. So we had about 2,200 people in San Francisco, and we shared this story. And as you saw the vision that's painted by Rockwell, this contented enterprise and the ability to collect all the data, OSI Soft has made a business of this for the last 35 years. We're based out of California. We're globally uh, located. And we have about 25,000 installations worldwide. And uh, we do have about 5,000 customers that we do direct business with. That's good. So our partnership started about nine years ago in 2007. And I guess it's evolved along the way. Uh, our intention of the partnership was to take the Pi data infrastructure and bring it down closer to the manufacturing process. Um, give me your impression of, of how our relationship has evolved over the years. Yeah, I think if you know about uh, the site edition or machine edition, it's the OSI soft technology collecting data, allowing you to visualize it today. And I think our partnership is quite good, uh, but we could do better. And as you pointed out, the market is asking for this. If we're gonna connect these machines and connect all these devices, we have to be thinking bigger. And I think we need to take our partnership just from a supplier perspective, but actually engage together. And uh, we've got some examples I think we can share with the folks today about how we would do that. Yeah, that's right. And then you take that data infrastructure, you lay on top a host of Rockwell Automation software tools in both MES and analytics and uh, vantage point, and we can drive some significant value for our customers. Yes. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about IT, OT convergence and the fact that we're moving toward one unified network across the entire enterprise. Can you give us your perspective on that? Yeah, our perspective, I guess I'd look at in the audience. How many of you are from IT? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Good, good. <laughs> we have one, admit. two, three. <laughs> Meet me outside after, we can talk. But, but this is the challenge we've got. If we're gonna be a progressive industry, no matter where you're coming from, We've got to take this cultural divide, which is OT and IT, and not just think about the technology, but how do we change the culture? How do we bring people together to solve problems? And I think Rockwell's done a really good job at building these partnerships like with Cisco and OSI Soft, where we can really bring IT and OT folks together to solve those problems. Good. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your data infrastructure? You bet. So 35 years ago, we started out as a historian. And as we transformed our business, we realized that data collection at 2,000 tags, 5,000 tags, started to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you saw from John, the connected enterprise, you started needing ability to collect data across your enterprise. And so our visions really changed from a historian into a real-time infrastructure. Looking, number one, at the edge getting as close to that device as possible, collecting, storing that data on a really small form factor, then taking it up into the enterprise with context so you can leverage a number of the tools that you're getting throughout the, the Rockwell piece, but also looking at third parties where you might want to leverage applications from Rockwell on top of this, or our cloud technology. So if you take edge, enterprise, and cloud, and our goal is to bring this seamless way to collect data and allow easy access to it and then on top of that, do things we don't do, which is application and MES and world-class applications that can sit on top that we partner with Rockwell. That's right, and then you throw in a couple of our joint partners like Cisco and Microsoft, and I think we're very well positioned to help our customers with their, with their information strategy. You bet, and you bet. And big data strategy. Okay, good. So we'll give you a couple of examples now of where OSI and Rockwell partnered to help customers. First comes from BHP Billiton. Uh, for those of you not familiar with this company, one of the largest mining operations companies in the world. You know, they had a situation where they believed that by collecting data at each one of their mines and ports and rolling that up to a central repository would give them the ability to run analytics. It would tell them a lot about how to improve their operations. And so, 
They worked together with Rock Automation and in each one of the mines and ports, they implemented our version of the Pi infrastructure, uh, which rolled up the data to the central Pi system. BHP is having a rough year. It, you probably realize that the mining industry has not been doing very well. But even in a significantly down year, they've seen so much productivity improvement from the solution that they have continued to roll out an enterprise-wide agreement. Yeah. Have any further input on that, Mark? You know, when I look at this transformation of the customer, they're using Rockwell and they're using OSIsoft, but they were doing it independently. What we did was brought two vendors together for the pursuit of happiness for this customer that was under duress. The economic situation, they needed to get more out of the assets they already have and drive optimization. So we engaged with an enterprise agreement from OSIsoft where we brought architects, a project manager, and we worked closely with Rockwell to bring that together. And what you get is all the scalability, all the great things that you heard from Fran and you heard from John from the products, and that context that can come from the automation floor all the way up into the enterprise network, keeping that context and allowing people to have easy access to that data, and then ultimately leveraging the applications from Rockwell on top of that. Just a great and phenomenal, when you bring a vision and a customer actually implements it, it's really exciting to watch. And one last thing, just to share, Please. they're up to almost 8 million data streams with this enterprise agreement. Because now they can collect all the data they want and utilize it how they need to to drive that business. Excellent. So another customer example comes to us from Anheuser-Busch InBev. And ABI North America had been struggling. They had a data infrastructure which was aging and very expensive to support. They knew that they needed to make a change so that they could get access to the right data. They had tried to justify upgrading the, pro uh, the product uh, many times, and it was refused. They just couldn't justify the funding until they piloted the Rock Automation OSI Pi infrastructure together with Vantage Point operation dashboards, and at which point they could see significant value in the implementation to financially justify the project. And so they'll move forward with rolling this solution out across 21 North American plants. And we're very excited because North America is just one of six zones for InBev. And so there could be a, a tremendous opportunity for us here. Your perspective. Uh, just amazing. I mean, if we're gonna get up here and share our story, it's so great <clears throat> to have customers that are getting value out of it. Again, an enterprise agreement from OSIsoft, coupled with a partnership with Rockwell, and this is where we challenge many of you in the audience. If these two companies can do this digital transformation, how can we help you? Our OSI soft team is here this week. We've got presentations to help. Um, and how can we emulate great things like this? And of course, beer. Who doesn't like beer? <laughs> you got it. All right, so a couple of, uh, so that's a couple of really good examples of how we work together to help yep. customers solve their problems. And, and improve uh, efficiency. So I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Any John. Any final words? We really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, my, my big thing is challenge us. How can we as vendors come together, partner to make you successful? So thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll look forward to talking with you in the future. You bet. Thank thanks, you. Martin. Okay. So in closing, I wanted to give you some insight as to where Rockwell Automation will continue to go with our information strategy. You know, everybody knows that this is, uh, uh, we think that we're well positioned to help you build the connected enterprise from the network infrastructure to the high performance architecture, the smart and intelligent devices that help you build connected and information enabled assets, and the software portfolio. Now as we move forward, we're going to leverage our current strengths to move, to move into implementations that will continue to be deployed in the, both in the cloud and on premise. So information, information management is all about focusing on our customers' problems and delivering solutions that drive value-based outcome for your organization. And so whether you're in life science, and it may take on some regulatory compliance 
requirements. And so there's a possibility that serialization could be part of the solution. Or you could be in another industry and it's all about real-time scheduling and, and assembly. Regardless, what you'll continue to see from us is to help you connect your plant to the enterprise, which will give you the connection across your entire supply chain to your suppliers as well as your customers. We'll help you collect and contextualize data, run the appropriate software reporting on top that'll help drive unprecedented value in your operations. And you will continue to see us invest in cloud deployment strategies, mobility, and virtualization, where we believe that it can help our customers.